Hello students, today we're going to learn uh, about how to use the gas law formulas that you, gas laws formulas that you have in your equation sheet, okay? Uh, first of all, just as a little refresher, things that you know already uh, that I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time going over in this uh, tutorial here is the concept of moles. You should understand what those are. You should have your formula chart with you, and uh, you should have a basic understanding on the behavior of gases and some basic skills of Algebra 1, okay? So we're going to put all of this together into uh, predicting specific quantities, and those will be pressure, volume, moles, or temperature um, using the gas laws, okay? If you look at your formula chart, you have six equations here, okay? The first one is uh, Dalton's uh, equation, and all that it is, it's telling you the total pressure of a gas, okay, or, or a sample of a gas, is going to be the sum of all the pressures inside that container. So if you have a container with gas A, B, and C, the pressure will be the sum of all of those, the total pressure. This is called the ideal gas law right here. And it's uh, just a, a, a basic equation to help us predict um, patterns of gases. Obviously, no, no real gas is ideal, but it does help us get pretty close. Okay, um, And then we have other gas law equations here. Okay, These three, however, are just a variation of this third equation here. Okay, So in essence, you really only have three. Uh, the state just broke these down for you to make it easier on you. Okay, so let's do some sample problems on how to use these equations. Oh yes, I put this as a reminder for myself. Um, the little twos here mean final, okay, and the ones mean uh, initial. So for these equations here, we're always going to be dealing with a change in the gas. Okay, there's going to be a before and an after. First problem here, a mixture of oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon dioxide exert a total pressure of 0 0.970 atmospheres. If the pressure of oxygen is 0 0.361 uh, atmospheres, and the pressure of carbon dioxide is 0 0.410 atmospheres, what is <clears throat> the pressure exerted by nitrogen gas. Well, if you look at the equations, the equation you should choose is this one right here. Okay, we, look, we have the total pressure, which is 0 0.970. Since all the units are the same, I'm not going to write those down. Um, pressure of oxygen is 3.61. Pressure of carbon dioxide is 0 0.410. And I'm looking for the pressure of nitrogen gas. The sum of all of these will be the total pressure, okay? Well, uh, this is going to be 9.70 is going to equal 0 0.771 plus x. I'm going to be the, do the opposite of what's being done to x here. I'm going to subtract by 0 0.771 on both sides. And x equals... Uh, 0.199. So this is the pressure of nitrogen gas in the sample of mixtures here. All right, so let's do one more problem. That was easy enough. Uh, a student, chemistry student collects a sample of ammonia gas at a temperature of 39 degrees Celsius. Okay, so as I'm reading here, I'm just marking some key words that are going to tell me what to do. Later, okay, so this is indicating some sort of change. <clears throat> the student measures the volume of the ammonia as 180, 108 milliliters, but its temperature is now 21 degrees Celsius. Okay, another change there. What was the volume of the ammonia when it was collected? Okay, so this is asking for V1, initial volume. I have temperature and volume. When you look at those equations, the equation you're going to use is... Good job. I knew you could do it. Okay? You probably picked this one right here. Okay? You could also have picked this one. Um, they're essentially the same thing. Since the problem doesn't mention pressure and moles, or we assume those are constant, we can just drop them. 
drop these two here. Okay, and then we will have the same exact equation. Well, here is uh, T1. Here is V2 because that's what happened later. This is T2 right here. And it, the problem is asking me for V1. Okay, remember, I always have to change this to Kelvin. Okay, from Celsius to Kelvin, just add 273 and you get Kelvin temperature. All right, let's set this problem up here very uh, quickly. I mean, I'm looking for V1, so that's my X. I'm going to have 312 Kelvin plus 108, uh, not plus, equals 108 mils over 294 Kelvin. Well, you're going to cross multiply, okay, to solve for X. I'm not going to do the whole algebra here, but your answer should be 115 uh, milliliters, okay, three sig figs piece of cake. Let's do one more problem. Let me change my color here. We're, we're almost there. Student collects 425 mils of oxygen, that's volume, at a temperature of 24 degrees Celsius. I'm going to have to change that to Kelvin. And a pressure of 0.899 atm. Okay. How many moles, so n, of oxygen that the student collect? Well, there's definitely not a change here. No, nothing indicating a change. I have pressure, volume, temperature, and moles. When you look at the equations available, the only one possible is ta -da, Pivnert, okay, or the ideal gas law. Um, now, Pivnert is pretty simple to use. Okay, You just have to know what R is. R is a constant in your formula chart tells you about the ideal gas constants, okay? Uh, they all essentially mean the same thing, they just have different units. One is going to involve atmospheres, one is going to involve kilopascals, and one millimeters of mercury. Okay, after that is just plug and chug. Um, so, I'm just going to plug and chug away from the problem, okay? The pressure 0.899 for the sake of space I'm, and time, I'm not writing the units, and it's absolutely wrong, and you should write the units, so don't do as I am doing here. Do as I say, okay? <laughs> um, the volume here is going to be 425 mils is going to equal, I'm looking for the number of moles. The R I've decided to use is 0 0.0821. Why? Because the unit here matches the unit of pressure in the problem. Okay, so 0 0.0821 times uh, the temperature here when I change it to Kelvin is going to be 297 uh, Kelvin. When I solve for X, my answer should be 15.7 moles. And I want you guys to try these problems on your own. Make sure you understand how to do them. Okay, and you can get the right answer. All right, uh, one last problem here. A gas occupies a volume of 0.58 liters at 1.01 kilopascals and 295 Kelvin. If the temperature drops, okay, so that's, that's a change to 270 Kelvin, and the volume increases, okay, so another indication of change to 0.477 liters, what is the new, again, change pressure? Okay, so I'm definitely looking here for P2. I have temperature, uh, volume, and pressure. Okay, um, when I look, the only equation possible that involves all three is... Good job, I knew you'd get it right. Uh, here we go. It's this one. Since there's no mention of moles in this problem, I'm just going to drop out the moles. Okay, uh, P2 here is going to be my X. One easy way to solve this problem is if you rewrite the formula here uh, with your x to help you see it. Okay, uh, in this case here, uh, when x is being multiplied by a fraction, you just multiply it by the reciprocal of that fra fraction. Okay, remember we're always doing the opposite in algebra one to get x by itself. Oops, this is supposed to be t. 2 over V2. Um, and 
over let me make this very clear I apologize for that this should be t2 over v2 uh, and this is supposed to be times when we plug those numbers in okay uh, here is v1 p1 t1 t2 and v2 of course p2 is our x that's what we're looking for x or p2 of course which are the same thing is going to equal 0 0.888 atm okay again try this problem make sure that you can do it all right that's all we had